Okay, so in the last lecture, we took a look at creating a brick wall. We made some bricks, we defined a pattern, uh, we made a brick wall. Let's see what the instructions say to do next. Using your brick wall that you've just created, make a fireplace. You can create your own fire or you can use the file provided. Holy mackerel! That looks pretty darn complex, doesn't it? Fortunately, a lot of things that look really complex turn out to be not all that complex once you break them down into their basic elements. And we've already got this wall in the background here. Now in this version, Ron has gone with an arched top. I'm gonna to do a flat top on mine. So really, this is a rectangular hole in a wall. There's a smaller version of the wall behind, a perspective shifted version of the wall on the side there and a little concrete ledge sticking out the front. I think we can create all of this. There's some wood inside and some fire making its way up. Now ours is gonna look quite different. All of yours is gonna look different as well. One of the cool things about Photoshop is everybody gets to go their own route. So what are we gonna start with? Well, let's go back to that brick wall that we made. So let's pop into Photoshop. And there's our brick wall from the last lecture. And here's my basic layers. I've got the grout layer down below. Uh, I did keep all of that original stuff that I used to create it. There's all my bricks there. Um, I don't know why I'm keeping that stuff, more of a nostalgia sort of thing, but uh, I like to make sure that if I need to go back to something, I've got all the original versions of it. Here's my grout layer, which you can see is just kind of a, a textured gray layer. There's my bricks sitting on top of it. Just a bunch of bricks sitting over top there. They've got a little bit of a drop shadow effect on them so they don't look quite so flat. And I did some uh, some dodging and burning over top of it to make sure that it looked uh, more random like an actual brick wall looks. Now I can't really use it as is because I've got a bunch of individual layers across here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a flattened version of this. And probably the simplest thing to do is just flatten it down. You've got a little pop-up at the top right there. Click on the pop-up and choose flatten image. Or you can right click on any of the layers and down at the bottom there, flatten image. Uh, oh, discard hidden layers, what does that mean? Well, you'll notice that my folder at the bottom of the stuff that I probably will never need, but you never know, um, the eyeballs turned off. Uh, so it just says it's gonna get rid of those hidden layers. Now, you'll notice once you flatten it that this is locked, I'm gonna unlock this layer here so I can cut a hole in this brick wall for the interior parts. Uh, I'm also going to make a duplicate of it. Uh, it's never a bad idea to make a copy of things as you go. And once I've made the hole in this wall, I want to make sure I have my original wall down below. In fact, maybe I'll, I'll name these. This will be my back wall, which I'll use as my backup. This will also be the, the wall at the back end of the fireplace there. This I'll call my front wall. And I'm going to cut a hole in the front wall. Now I'm going to turn off the eyeball on the back wall just so that once I cut the hole in here, I can actually see right through to the actual transparency. So I've turned off that eyeball. I'm going to make a layer mask on this top wall here. And now I need to decide how big is this opening in my wall going to be? Now there's a few ways I could go about this. I could just grab my marquee tool. If I just click the M on the keyboard, it'll take me to my rectangular marquee. And I could click and drag and define where the hole's gonna be. Now, be careful. Imagine you were the guy who was making this fireplace. You'd probably wanna make sure that you didn't have to cut any bricks or as few bricks as possible when you were making the edge. So instead of having the edge cutting down between some bricks here, you'd probably want to line it up against some existing bricks. And probably rather than cutting any of these bricks, you would simply take one of these wider bricks, turn it 90 degrees so you'd only see the end of the brick down below. So I'm gonna make sure that my opening lines up with the bottom of the bricks at the top there. See this, this line of bricks that's going to be the top of the doorway. I've lined it up so that this grout gets hacked away. Obviously there's going to be no grout below the bricks. And on the side over here, there'd be none of this grout on the outside of these bricks here. So I'll cut that grout away. And it goes right down the middle of this brick down below, which kind of makes it look like a brick turned sideways. So you see the end of the brick. Another way, if you want a little more precision, if you turn on your rulers, and if you can't see your rulers, command or control R, or you can go under view, rulers, there's the command R, will pop up your rulers and you can click and you can drag some guides down into the image. I think we looked at guides in a previous class. Now the document that I made already had some guides on here, so I'm just going to grab my move tool and I'm going to drag these guides off of here. And that way I know that these are the guides that I've created. And I can throw another guide onto the side here. And then I see what the guides is you can move them around afterwards. So if this wasn't quite in the right position, with the move tool, if you hover over the guide, you'll see that little symbol appear and you can drag that guide to somewhere else. So I'm gonna line it up along the edge of the brick there, line it up across the brick there. And as we saw last week, when you have guides or the grid turned on, let me just make sure that lines up perfectly with the edge there. 
Um, the marquee tool will snap to those guides. Now, where do I want the bottom of my oven to be? I'm thinking there. I'm going to put the bottom of it there. Cool. Then I can grab my marquee tool, click anywhere near this guide, and it'll snap to the blue guide across there, bring it down to the bottom of my oven. And on this layer mask here, make sure that it's active. See the little four corner points around there. I can simply fill under edit, choose fill, and on a layer mask, black will hide. So now I have an opening in this wall, and that's where my fireplace is going to be. Okay, it's a little offset to the side a bit, whatever. Actually, because it's a layer mask, remember we can uh, modify these afterwards. So what I could do, if I grab my move tool, I could bring this guide over a little bit if I want to even out the size of these walls over here. I could bring my guide over to about there. And because a layer mask is always editable, if I take that marquee tool again, or M on the keyboard, I could select this section over here, and as long as I have this layer mask selected, I filled with black to hide, I could fill with white to reveal that bit of brick in there. You can see that black rectangle got a little bit smaller. Command D gets rid of the marching ants. And if you want to turn off those blue guides, Command semicolon will turn off those blue guidelines in there. All right, so there's the opening in the wall for my fireplace. Now the back wall, if I turn it on, it looks like nothing has happened because it is exactly the same size as the wall in the front. There's my back wall, and if I just wedge it in there, huh, the bricks are the same size. Now, if that back wall was farther away, you would expect those bricks to be a little bit smaller, wouldn't you? Hmm, I'm going to have to scale this back wall layer down a little bit. Although, if we look at Ron's example, we also have a side wall showing in here. Now, there's a couple ways you could do this perspective look in here. You could have a, it look as though you're looking straight on at the fireplace, and you see the left and right sides of the, the inside there. Or, if you just did one wall, you could make it kind of look as though you're looking at it from the side. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say, I'm just going to turn off, actually I'm going to duplicate this back wall layer, and this is going to be my left inside wall. Turn off the back wall so we don't see it. On my left inside wall, I'm going to play around with its perspective. Um, so I'm going to move it over. There's the edge of my wall. Now, imagine this wall here. It comes across, here's the front of the wall, and then imagine a 90 degree turn so that it goes inside the fireplace there, inside the oven. I'm going to line up this wide brick with this narrow brick. And once I've got the edge of this wall lined up against the front wall, so there's the edge of the side wall, and this is the side end or the end of the brick that we see the face of here. So I'm going to now do a little bit of a perspective shift. So if I go under Edit, Transform, Perspective, I can grab this side and watch what happens when I pull this downwards. That wall is getting smaller on this side than it is on this side, almost like this end is farther away. Now, the more I pull it in, ah, the more those bricks look like they're getting stretched out. Not a problem. I can scale this, this trapezoidal shape to make it narrower. If I right click, I get this pop up and here are all the different transformations I can do. It's the same thing as going under Edit, Transform. And you can see there's the check mark on perspective because I'm currently in the perspective mode. I can jump back and forth to any of these different transform modes. And I'm going to pop over to scale, which lets me grab this side here and start pulling it inwards. Now, I do have a bit of an issue in that it's distorting a bit. Depending what version of Photoshop you've got, you may need to hold the shift key. And that'll let you pull that side inwards. And we can jump back and forth between the scale and the perspective as needed. So if I pop back to perspective and pull this inwards a little bit more, now it kind of looks more like this wall is heading off into the distance. So here the side of the wall is facing us, and then it turns 90 degrees and heads to the inside of the oven there. Now I'm not going to use all of these bricks. My oven isn't going to be, what, like 10 bricks deep in there. Uh, but I'm going to cut it off somewhere around there. But this gives a sense of that perspective that's going on. Now I'm going to hit the check mark or the return key on the keyboard, and that accepts that transformation. Now, if I turn on this back wall, holy mackerel, the bricks in the back wall are way too large. Now, I only want to go back maybe three or four bricks. So here's my side wall. So maybe I'll cut it around there. Here's my left inside wall. 
And with the marquee tool, I could make a selection and simply delete the bricks that I don't want. So if I want it to be, say, four bricks deep, one, two, three, four, I can zoom in there, line it up against the edge of that brick, and I can simply hit delete, and away that goes. Grab my back wall, edit, transform, or a fast way to get to these different transformations, if you just do Command T or Control T on Windows, it'll call up the free transform. So you do a Command or Control T, there's our corners. Right now we're in transform mode, and I can shrink that down. We're in scale. I can shrink that down until it lines up roughly with the size of the bricks on the back wall there. Now don't worry if it's not perfect. I mean, ultimately we're gonna be putting like, you know, fire and logs and soot. A lot of the mismatches we can hide with stuff afterwards, but uh, this gives a sense of depth. Now we've got a little bit of a back wall, there's the side wall, and there's the front face in there. I'm gonna hit the check mark, and that accepts that transformation. Now right now it kind of looks like we're looking at this from, you know, kind of the right side inwards, and we see the, the wall on the side of the brick here. If I wanted to make it look like we were looking from the other side, I could move this wall over and flip it, edit, transform, flip horizontal, and now it kind of looks like, let me line that up there, like we're looking at it from the left side, and we can see that right side of the wall over here on the right. If I want it to look like we're looking straight on, like if you look at Ron's example, again, you see this perspective wall on both sides, so it looks like you're looking at it from the front. Now don't worry if you don't get the perspective absolutely perfect. We're not going for flawless here. Like I said, we're gonna be filling it with fire and soot and all kinds of wonderful stuff like that. So I'm just gonna make a duplicate of this inside wall here, move it over to the side, and I will flip this one, edit, transform, flip horizontal, that flips it about the vertical axis, oddly enough. Now we have a wall that comes inwards. There's the back edge of the fireplace. And there's the wall that comes towards us and there's the front edge. Cool. Um, we do have a bit of an issue though in that the bottom looks like it just kind of disappears. Imagine you put a log or something in there, it would just fall right down through the bottom. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a floor for this as well. That could be something as simple as, maybe I'll just grab a little bit of this front here, duplicate it to a new layer and do a little perspective shift on it as well. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use this front wall here. And if we break this down into its basic components, there's our back wall, just hanging out in the back. There's the back wall. There's our left inside wall. Oh, left inside, there's our left inside wall. This is our, actually, and I'm gonna rename this, right inside wall. And this one is our left inside wall. And there's our front wall with a hole. There's the left, there's the right, there's the back. I'm gonna make a floor, and I'm gonna make it from this section over here. I'm just gonna grab my marquee tool, and I'll just grab this little section of bricks here. Just here, get that whole row of bricks. And I'm gonna duplicate this section of this layer onto a new layer. Simple way to do it, Command or Control J. And you can see that it takes that selected area and duplicates it to a new layer. And I'm gonna drop this below the front wall, but I'm gonna move it upwards. Let's grab my move tool. And you'll notice in the top here, we have auto select layer. If this is turned on, if I click over here, whatever I click on at the top of this layer stack is what will become selected. So if I try to grab that layer one down there by clicking here and lifting upwards, whoops, that whole front wall lifts up. If I wanna move something that is behind another layer, and you know, in retrospect, I probably should have moved that wall before I dragged it below the front edge there, but this is actually a good example of where this auto select being turned off can help. Right now I have layer one selected, with the auto select turned on, if I click on the wall, oh, it selected this front wall here and it drags up the entire front wall. But if I have this layer selected, and actually I'm gonna rename this as I go, I'm gonna call this floor of oven. With it selected, if I turn off auto select layer, now when I click here, this will remain selected. It won't jump to the front wall and I can grab that floor and you see that just lifted up below the front wall there. And I'm gonna line up this bottom part, actually, if this was the floor of the oven, this would be the top of one of those bricks. So I'll move it to the side until they line up. And again, you don't have to be totally persnickety about this. If the perspective's off a little bit, that's fine. But I'm gonna line this up nice and precisely, and then I'm gonna go Edit, Transform, Perspective, and I'll shift these inwards a little bit. 
Now, again, we're not going for perfect perspective. I'm not going to try to put a, a vanishing point back there and calculate all the different lines of, of perspective, uh, but I, I'm going to eyeball it. So I'll pop into scale, shrink this downwards, hold the shift key, and it looks like this will probably be the base of the floor there. And I'm basing that on this line of bricks that kind of goes up and onto the back wall, down the side wall, and across the front here. So it looks like this part right along here is going to be the base where the floor ends up. And then I'll switch back over to perspective and I'll pull these sides inwards until my vanishing point lines kind of line up with the ones on the side wall there. And then I'll hit the check mark. Now, some of this I'm going to have to get rid of. If I zoom in here, you can see that this floor looks like it extends right out through this side wall here. This is where layer masks can come in handy again. If I give this floor of oven a layer mask, just like in the doorway last week, we were able to use the um, option click. Remember, if you option click with the uh, lasso tool, you get that little spider webby sort of thing. And I got to the lasso tool simply by hitting L on the keyboard. There's my lasso tool. This row of bricks needs to be visible. So I want it to go from here all the way to that edge. So I'll do a click here, hold down the option key, click, there's my little spider webby thing, pop down to that corner, and all of this I want to hide. So I'm going to encompass it with a selection, and on this layer mask here, I'm just going to fill it with black. Edit, fill, and for contents, choose black. Command D gets rid of the marching ants. Okay, that wasn't perfect, but it'll do. It'll do. Yeah. Um, also, my back wall seems to have shifted downwards. Notice it doesn't line up anymore. Fortunately, they're all still on separate layers. There's my back wall. If I grab the move tool or V on the keyboard, I can use the arrow keys to nudge that back wall up there a bit. And actually, I oh, you know what? I can do better than that. Here's my floor. I'm going to extend that a little bit. Command T and I'll scale that with the shift key. There we go. Oh, look at that. Just fits nicely into the base there. And again, you don't have to be this precise. I'm just getting particularly persnickety about it. And I'm not even going to worry about the fact that my perspective line here is wrong beyond belief. Because again, I'm going to put fire over top of this. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, this side over here, grab my layer mask, grab my lasso tool or L on the keyboard, hold down option or alt. and fill this section on the layer mask with black. Command D gets rid of the marching. Oh, wow, that is not a great job. It'll do. Again, fire and brimstone is going to take care of it all. Um, all right, so I think that's a pretty good fireplace. What should we do next? Well, let's put a little bit of uh, shading onto there. If this really was a fireplace and you had actually been burning stuff in there, I'm guessing there'd be some soot and stuff around in there. Now, I want to do it wall by wall, bit by bit. So let's start with the back wall here. Notice I have this layer selected. I'm going to make a new transparent layer. And technically, I don't need to clip this to the layer below because there's no other layers below it that it could affect. But I'm going to clip it anyway, just because, you know, I'm that kind of person. So I'll just do a little right click and create clipping mask. Again, there's a bunch of ways we can make the clipping mask. If you hold down the option or the alt key, when you get over this little line here, you can click to create or click to release. Once it's clipped, I'm going to grab a paintbrush or B on the keyboard. I'm going to grab some black paint. If I hit D on the keyboard, that gets my default colors. Bring the opacity down maybe 20% or so. A nice soft brush. I'm going to take that hardness all the way down to zero. Bit of a larger brush. And watch this. Blech. There's a little bit of soot back there. Blah, blah, blah. There's some more soot getting added around, like a little bit of scorching in there. Um, could be a little bit of shading. Maybe it'll do some shading across the top in here. Yeah, that's where the smoke goes up. Um, now, the side walls would also get a little bit scorched. So I'll go to the left inside wall, make a new transparent layer, clip it to the layer below. And with the same paintbrush, I'll put a little bit of scorching on that side wall. Uh, on the right inside wall, new layer, clip it, add a little bit of scorching. And the floor would probably get the worst of all. Give it a new layer, clip it, and add a little bit of soot scorchiness down there. And in fact, this outer wall, we could kind of simulate some lighting, some shading in this room. If I were to select this layer, 
give it a new transparent layer. One of the other reasons for making a transparent layer is in case you really mess things up. Like I could totally on this layer, grab my paintbrush and just do some, uh, you know, shading around onto there. But if I then went and did a bunch of other stuff uh, and then realized that, oh, maybe I didn't want the shading onto there. I can't really get rid of it, can I? So I'm going to undo all of that. And by putting it onto a new transparent layer and clipping it, to the front wall. I can do all kinds of shading, whatever I want to do. And let's say I realize that, oh no, I did too much shading on this corner up here. Not a problem. If I hit E on the keyboard, there's my eraser tool with a bit of a larger brush. I could ease that off because it's just kind of floating on its own little layer there. And once it's clipped to the layer below, it only affects that layer. So give that a try, play around with yours, see what you can come up with in the shading department. Uh, I'm gonna work on adding a little bit more shading to mine, and then we'll take a look at making some sticks, some logs that we can put in the fire, and then we'll add some fire to it, and then we'll uh, put a little concrete ledge in the front. So play around with yours, and when you're ready, move on to the next lecture.